welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Now the concept for this video I have taken from Sam over Thoughts on Tomes. I saw her do this years ago. If she could still be doing it, I'm not certain. But I thought it was a very interesting concept and I was like, oh, I kind of want to do this. And now I have time, so I'm going to do it. A little background though, I joined Goodreads in 2012, just after I graduated with my bachelor's. So I had a lot more free time to do things and I really liked how everything worked. For those who don't know, Amazon didn't buy it until the following year. So for those early days, I really liked the recommendations algorithm because I was looking for new authors. And at that time, the algorithm, the way it worked for recommendations is it would not show you a book that you had read or a book that you had marked as want to read. It would only show you other books. And so I experimented a lot. So 2012 and then 2013 were like huge manga years for me because that was when I really got into it. But then I was also trying other things, like I was doing all, reading a lot of historical fiction, I was venturing further into romance, as well as reading my fantasy and sci-fi. But I was branching out trying to find new people. So we are going to be going over my five-star reads from 2013 and seeing how much I actually remember now. So this was the year that I read Skullduggery Pleasant by David Landy. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh yeah, I really enjoyed that book. I still want to read the rest of the series, which I haven't continued since that time. But from what I remember of Skullduggery Pleasant, there was a young woman who, after her uncle died, had met a person named Skullduggery Pleasant, and then she gets further immersed in this world of magic and paranormal that she didn't know existed before. And I believe the book is set in Ireland. And that's what I remember. <laughs> and at the end of the book, she chooses a name for herself, whereas before she'd been giving her real name, and that was dangerous because if somebody knew your real name, they could then use it to control you. So it was good that she chose a working name. So now people can't control her. I also read The Crimson Crown by Cinda Williams Chima. And this is a fantasy book in her seven realms. This is the first quartet. I believe this is book four. And this is where Reza Anna Mariana has become queen and she is navigating the politics of all of it. And we have, I think his name is Han. It's either Han or Hal, but I think it's Han as he's becoming a wizard in his own right. And I remember being really confused on this book because all of a sudden it seemed like there was a romance between these two characters. For me, I had not picked up on any potential romance in the earlier books, so that was kind of interesting. Like I said, I got into a lot of manga, and one of the series I really like is Gakuken Atlas. And there are several volumes on this, and I don't remember what each individual volume was about, but the overall story of this is Alice's friend comes down with magical powers and so she has to go to the special academy which is also a boarding school and Alice doesn't want to be alone so she follows her friend and convinces them to take her too and then finds out that she has her own unique ability so then she's navigating school her coming to terms with her unique ability as well as there are darker things afoot I never finished this series but not because I didn't want to. So this is one that I'll probably reread in the future, probably next time I have another manga binge mood. I read A Christmas Dress for Ellen by Thomas S. Monson, and I don't remember this. I think from the title we can kind of guess what it's going to be about, but this is an inspirational kind of read, and I learned pretty early on that these aren't my style. Every once in a while one will hit, but most of the time, no. I also read Aeolin by Karen Rita Gastreek, who is a native Kansas City area author. I remember I found out about this book because I was attending the local sci-fi fantasy convention. And in this world, Aeolin is the main character. 
she is a witch. She has powers. And a lot of the witch witches beforehand have been purged from this kingdom. She ends up, as a child, becoming friends with the prince, but he, she doesn't know he's the prince, and he doesn't know she's a witch. So they become friends, and then they get separated, and later when they grow up, they meet each other again. I know he liked her when she was a kid. I don't know if she liked him. But then there's that tension of... He's still... He, he's being raised to be an heir for a country who hates magic, and she's trying to bring magic back. That's kind of what I remember of it. I know that there is a sequel, but I've never read it. And I don't know at this point if I would. I remember enjoying this book, though. I read Mama's Bank Account by Catherine Forbes, which is a historical fiction. I at one point thought it was real because I used a black and white photograph, but I'm pretty sure when I was pulling all the books up it, that it did say it was historical fiction. And I know this is about a family of five daughters, and they're just growing up in their time period. I think it's like early 1900s. And so, you know, learning how to clean the house. I remember there's one episode where mom, Mama wants them to learn how to dust the parlor correctly. So she starts hiding pennies. And at first she tells them, okay, there's five pennies. And so they have to be really good at dusting in order to find them. And then eventually it became sometimes there'd be pennies and sometimes there weren't. So if you didn't dust really well, you might not get the money that's there. Somebody else might get it. So things like that. It, it was more, it was very much like a slice of life kind of thing. And the whole idea was with mama's bank account is she had a bank account that she was depositing money in for the girls later. And in reality, she didn't. It was just like a goal and a dream and you know, something to kind of hope for since they weren't in poverty, but they were kind of on the cusp of it. I read The Grand Sophie by Georgette Heyer. This was the first and only Georgette Heyer book I've read, but I think this kind of introduced me to the idea of historical romance. And in this, Sophie is a cousin of the family who is kind of centered at the book. She comes to live with them and basically kind of upends their lives, shows them a different way of living, especially the oldest son who has been engaged to somebody who's very prim and proper, who he deems is respectable enough, but nobody else in the family likes. And then the, the son, oldest son and Sophie end up falling in love. He has to convince his fiance to break up with him because it's a big scandal if he does it with her kind of thing, or it's not allowed in the this time period. I think it's kind of like Regency time period. So yeah, this was kind of my first historical romance and I enjoyed it. I read the, at least the first two volumes of Kamikaze Kaito Jean by Tachibana Higuchi and I remember nothing. I think this was probably similar to the Sailor Moon where you have a regular girl who turns into like a magical fighter kind of superhero person but yeah I don't remember otherwise anything of it this is the year that I read The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss and I loved it I still haven't finished the second book yet but I'm halfway through and I'm not in a hurry since he hasn't published the next one in the series either but this follows Kavoth, who is old at the very beginning. Like, it's a frame story where he's old and he has an apprentice. And then a scholar comes and recognizes him. And then he's telling the scholar the history of his life. So, kind of goes back and forth. Something I love that Rothfuss does is his chapters feel very short. So, it's easy to get sucked into the book. Just to be like, okay, one more chapter. One more chapter. One more chapter. I worked on the series Kami Sama Kiss by Juliet Suzuki. And if I remember right, I think this is where a young woman inherits a temple and it has a temple demon. And it's supposed to be like a romance, but it, I never finished it. But I really liked volume five, apparently. <laughs> I also read Isabel by Gay Gavriel Kay, and he writes historical fantasy. And what I remember of this is I don't remember the characters' names, but I remember it was like a young man and his friends 
I think they're, um, I think they're submarine in France, and then they get sent back to like Dark Ages Britain when the Celts and the Romans are fighting that time period. And that's what I remember. I remember loving this book when I read it, but then I never picked up anything else by him. I think this was more of a standalone book, but he had like a sister series to it that was a series. I read Failure is Not an Option by Jane Kranz. If you've ever watched the movie Apollo 13, Jane Kranz is the one with the white vest. Real person. And I loved this memoir autobiography where Kranz is talking about all of his life with Houston. He, he goes over a little bit before he started, but he goes through a lot of the early days getting mission control set up. He helped form it as it became in the Apollo era. And I just love all those little details. I really love my biographies about na early NASA, early astronauts, early NASA staff, all of that. This was also the year that I read Cast in Shadow by Michelle Segarra. And I remember my friend Annie was the one who suggested this to me because I was looking for a fantasy. And I ended up loving it. She liked it enough to like recommend it to me, but I really ended up loving it. It's an ongoing series, and I've read everything except for the book that came out the other year, or earlier this year don't remember. It's on my shelf. I just haven't read it yet. But yeah, it's one that I really enjoy. This follows Kaylee, who is the chosen for her world. At certain times, a chosen one is born and they have the marks of the chosen on them. Sometimes not at birth. It might, I think it might come later that marks begin to show up. And Kaylee is mortal. She's the first mortal to have this, these marks, and all the other Chosens have eventually died. So she doesn't know what to do or anything, but she's living in a society where there's other mortal races, and then there's some immortal races. So the immortals are trying to decide in this first book if she's dangerous and should be killed, or should be protected and taught. <laughs> it's kind of like that. At the same time, she is like a young junior police person, police woman, and she's trying to do her job. She meets up with someone from her past who she's really pissed to see, like to the point where she actually tries to kill him like in the when they first meet. This is at the very beginning of the book, so I'm not really spoiling anything. But yeah. Still really love this series. It's definitely one that I am due for a reread. I'm now trying to collect all the books. I I think I have two kind of in the middle, but I need the earlier ones still. I also read the manga series Beauty Pop, which by Kyoko Arai? Arai? Ari? Sorry, I don't know. What I remember of this one is this is about two teens who are into like being a beautician, like haircutting, all of that stuff. And it's a romance in the end. I read Sunlight and Shadow by Cameron Doki, and I don't really remember this one very much. The synopsis on Goodreads didn't really clarify anything in my mind. What I remember is there's a woman who goes to this castle, and there's a daytime prince and a nighttime prince, and that's all I remember. Then I read Vivi Rose by Bannery Hidaka. Really loved a few of these, like middle books, I think towards the end. And this is about a young woman who likes designing purses and clothes. Her older sister becomes pregnant and then decides to get engaged and married to her boyfriend. And the main character is not happy about it, but goes with her sister to her wedding dress fitting and ends up meeting these two men who design wedding dresses and some sparks fly. It's also a romance. I also read The China Garden by Liz Berry, and this is like a historical fiction contemporary. It's a weird kind of mix. I just remember that this one has like a maze garden, and I don't remember much else about it. I have A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare. This is a historical romance set around a town of spinsters, and then you have the men who 
fall in love with them and crazy hijinks ensue. I think this is Minerva's book, who she wants to be a archaeologist, or like she finds fossils and she wants to be known in the scientific community. And so she convinces uh, this young man to take her to a science expo where she can show her fossil that she has found. And then the last book I'm talking about is Shadows by Robin McKinley. And I don't really remember this one, which is actually surprising because I'm a huge Robin McKinley fan. But I remember this one just being a little bit weirder than her earlier works. I, I still liked it, but not to the not like I do like the hero and the crown and the blue sword those are my favorites by her have you read any of these if you have what were your thoughts and if not do you remember any of the books you loved in 2013 I'd love to know down below thank you and have a great day